Praise the Lord. How's everyone doing this morning? You guys doing okay? All right. Well, I hope you're hungry this morning for the Word. Uh, during worship, uh, or after worship, uh, Eva came up and said, Pastor, I feel like I have a word, and uh, just the, it was a word of unity uh, that when God's people are together, it's like a three-strand uh, uh, cord, and the Holy Spirit's kind of the fourth strand that kind of wraps around that, and there's power and there's strength in unity. Isn't that tr the truth? And the truth is, is that we need each other. And we've got to be together. That's why Sunday mornings are so important to be together, to worship together, to bear each other's burdens. And, um, and so we just wanted to encourage you uh, with that word. Um, we've been tracking through Scripture uh, at quite a rate, uh, kind of like a Scripture marathon over the past several weeks. And I'm really proud of you guys. We, if you're new with us today, we want to welcome you. We're glad that you're here. Um, we've been tracking through the New Testament, reading through the New Testament in eight weeks. And uh, using this tool, the books of the Bible, uh, getting through that this last week, we read through Hebrews and James and all of Mark. And uh, again, doing this because we know the power of God's Word. And we're not doing it isolated. We're doing it in community. And we're doing it together. And uh, we do it also because God's Word, it describes itself as our daily bread. And we wouldn't go a day without eating or, a, or longer than a few days. Uh, the Word of God is also described as water for our soul or the breath of God. And last week we looked at Ephesians 6 and Hebrews 4.12 that the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God, the rhema Word of God, the spoken Word of God. And it's important for us to, to get our minds around that and understand the power and the grace that comes when we get the Word of God inside of us. Well, it's interesting, this last Sunday, if you picked up a copy of the Pentecostal Evangel, there was an article about God's Word. And the article read this, and it kind of caught my attention, especially with what we're talking about on Sundays. It says, lack of Bible reading cited for U.S. moral decline. And I want to read a portion of this. Listen to what it says. It says, a research, or a report released in March, this past March, found that more than three-fourths of Americans, 77%, believe morals and values are declining in the United States. How many would agree? Yeah, probably at least three-fourths of us. With the lack of Bible reading cited as the most cited cause. Isn't that interesting? It says the American Bible Society research uncovered a significant disconnect in belief versus behavior. What we believe versus the way we act. It continues, it says, while 66% of those surveyed agreed that the Bible contains everything a person needs to know to live a meaningful life, 58% say that they do not personally want wisdom and advice from the Bible. What? And 57% read it fewer than five times a year. I'm saying not here, not at the Gateway Church. That's why we're reading the Word. That's why we're getting it inside of us. It says, the State of the Bible 2013 survey conducted by Barna, uh, the Barna Group on behalf of the American Bible Society found that the Bible continues to dominate both mind space and book retail space as America's undisputed bestseller. And we talked about that a few, a few weeks ago, that the Bible has been the number one uh, bestseller and continues to be. In fact, we encourage you to go um, onto YouVersion and to help uh, get to 100 million downloads of that app. It's the Word of God getting it inside of us. It's undisputed, the bestseller. But one in six persons report buying a copy of, of the Bible in the past year. Four out of five Americans identify that, they, that the Bible is as sacred, and the average household, what is it? they found out that the average house, and this might be true with you guys, has 4.4 copies, four and a half copies of God's Word average per household. Now, it kind of ends. The, dis, the, discon, or the disconnect between belief and action when it comes to the Bible reading is troubling. How many would agree? And we see it, don't we? Americans are telling us that the cure for the declining morality is sitting on our bookshelves. But more than half of Americans are simply letting 
the cure get dusty. And you know what? When I read that, I said, man, not here. God, help us to be different from the way that the world's going. If the world's going this direction, let's go the opposite direction. Let's get into the Word of God. And that's why we've been highlighting Scripture. I want you to turn with me to James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. It's part of our Bible reading on page 314, if you've been tracking with us in the book of books. Not the book of books, the books of the Bible. And uh, listen to what it says concerning this article that I thought was very, very interesting. It says, Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So get rid of filth, but humbly accept the word. Then it says this. It says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Everyone say, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not listen to what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. That doesn't happen. We, we look in the mirror, we can understand that, right? But whoever looks intently into the perfect law, God's word, Whoever looks to God's word for strength and for hope and, and uh, all these things gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. So not only hearing it, but doing God's word, they will be blessed in what they do. Now, church, I want you to be blessed. I want this to be the most blessed place on the planet. And the way that happens is by getting God's word inside of you. For us to be doing this together, to be reading God's word and let it plant and let it, the, the roots go deep, deep inside of our hearts. And so let me just take a, take a break here and say, come on. We've got two more weeks uh, of reading through Scripture. I want to encourage you, if you've kind of waned off, pick it back up and start again tomorrow. Get through the Word together and let it just refresh you. If you want to be blessed, get in God's Word. If you never started, this is the week to start. Get into God's Word. Read it. And uh, read it till the pages fall out, one, uh, one guy said. Read it. Because the reality is, is that we live in a dark world. How many would agree? We, that article cites the, the moral decline, right? Uh, we look at the music on the radio, or, or uh, the, we look at media as a whole. Um, I know school's out for most of the students, but, but boy, at school, the enemy, is, it's kind of a dark place spiritually in many cases, or our workplaces, or you know, you're driving down the road, you can't get, get away from it, billboards, and just all different things across the, across the globe. We live in a dark place, and the trouble, the problem, the reality is, is that there's darkness all around us. And so what do we do? Do we move to the mountains and say, hey, I'm just going to get away from it all? Do we dig a hole in the ground and get a, get a, find a bunker to, to kind of separate ourselves? Do we refuse to associate with the world? Or maybe it's better just to get in the Word and let God's Word move some of that world and that darkness out. I want you to turn with me to Psalm chapter 119. If you open your Bible to right halfway, you'll find it just about. Psalm 119, 105, as we've been tracking how the Bible describes itself as the, the daily bread and the water and the breath of God, the sword of the Spirit, the Bible also describes itself in a way that will combat the darkness in the world. Let's look at what it says. Psalm 119, verse 105. It says, Your word, God's word, is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Your word is a lamp and a light. And what does that mean for us? It means that we can go into the darkness and we can see. You turn the lights on and it, things become 
clear. Now, let's take a quick survey this morning. How many of you have ever been walking at night uh, and stumbled over something? Maybe you hit a table or you stubbed your toe. Or um, the, uh, Reagan, some of her friends, they like to play a game called sardines. And they turn all the lights off in the basement. And they go down there. One person hides. And then they, without turning the lights on, no lights at all, they go stumbling around our basement. And they destroy the whole thing. Because they're bumping into stuff. They can't see, right? They're stubbing their toes. They're kicking the table. There's stuff all over. You know, it's kind of interesting. I was thinking about it. You know, uh, you've heard the, you know, the story. You know, how does a uh, blind child get disciplined at home? The parents rearrange the furniture, right? Oh, that's, that's bad. All right. Okay, I won't do that second service. Thank you for that. Yeah. But we've all stumbled, Right? We've all been in the darkness and kind of tripped or we've kind of fallen. Maybe you're out in the woods and you trip over a root that you didn't see, whatever the case. Now, let me ask you this. So we've all stumbled. We've all kind of tripped and fall. Have, how many of us have stumbled spiritually? All right. Let's be honest. 1 John 1, 9, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all said things. We've all done things that we have regretted. And the question this morning is, is it possible that when we are stumbling spiritually, it's because we're not using our lamp? Is it possible that when we are stumbling spiritually, it's because we're trying to make it in this world without the light that God gave us to light the way? I believe it's true. Psalm 119, if you read it in its entirety, talks mostly about the Word of God. I'd encourage you. Not, I mean, I know I'm asking you to read a ton of Scripture anyway, but read today, Psalm 119. I read it the other day on Friday morning on my deck on my day off, and it was awesome how, how much pops out about God's Word. But if you read, I wanted to read one little part uh, extra, page, uh, no, page 129, verse 129, it says, your statutes, your law are wonderful. How many believe God's word is wonderful? Therefore, I obey them. The unfolding of your words give light. Everyone say light. It gives understanding to the simple. The op- I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands, for your word. Turn me or turn to me and have mercy on me. You, as, man, I'm having a hard time reading this morning. As you always do to those who love your name. Then verse 31, 31 says, direct my footsteps according to your word. Give light to my footstep. I love that. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from the oppression of men that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine that light. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your decrees. I love that. It's all about God's word being a light in a dark world. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. We'll continue kind of looking at this idea that God's word is a light. Let's look what it says in verse 23. It says, for these commands... God's word are a lamp. This teaching is a light. I won't say light again. And the, and the corrections of discipline are the way to life. If you want to live, if you want to live blessed, we have got to get the light of God's word inside of us. If we allow light to get on the inside of us, it will take care of the darkness. Do you believe that? But the problem is, let's turn to John chapter 3, interesting verse in John chapter 3. It talks about the darkness that's all around us. And what do we choose? Look what it says in John chapter 3. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. It says, this is the verdict. It says, light has come into the world. Christ has come to the, to, into the world. We understand that. But men loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. 
So we have the choice between light and darkness, and what it's saying here is that men choose darkness. Everyone who does evil hates light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. The problem is, is that man loves darkness. The problem is, is that our eyes adjust in the darkness. If we were to turn off all the lights this morning, and I could light one candle within a matter of minutes, we'd be able to see and to, to kind of get around. It may be difficult, but our eyes will adjust. And that's what's happened in our world. The world is darkness, and our eyes have adjusted and it's trouble. Go back to Proverbs chapter 6. I hopefully you're, uh, maybe you're still there. I, I forgot to tell you to keep your finger there for, for another moment. It continues. I'll read 23 again. It says, For these commands are a lamp. This teaching is a light, and the corrections of discipline are the way to life. We understand that. It's the way to life. Keeping you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of the wayward life. Or wife. And what's interesting there, it's talking about, of course, falling into adultery. But I believe that God's word will keep us from all sin. When we have God's word inside of us, shining from the inside out, that light will keep us from sin. And that's my first point this morning, is that the light, God's word, will overcome darkness. It will overcome sin in our lives. You're saying, yeah, but you don't know how much darkness is inside. <laughs> you don't know what's, what I do behind closed doors, or you don't understand where I've been or what I've said or what I've done. It doesn't matter. Dark is dark, but light is light. And if, even if there's a little flicker, that light will overcome the darkness. I love it. When I was growing up, um, it, it was more popular. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't hear this as often. Um, but uh, my mom and dad, they would teach us that there is power in the name of Jesus. There was a song uh, that we used to sing, and we used to sing it in the back of my dad's truck going down the road, me and my sisters. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee, right? And then it has a, par a part that says, tell me who then can stand before us, Something, I forget the rest of the words. But in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. So you're familiar with it. All right. And we used to sing that. But the truth is, is that in the name of Jesus, who is the light, demons, the darkness, have to flee. And we can take that to the bank. We can understand that. The light will overcome the darkness. Amen? Amen. Number two, the light God's word will also redeem what is lost. In Luke chapter 15, it's the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son. And what I love about that story is that when it talks about the lost coin, what does the woman do to find the coin? In Luke 15 verse 8, she turns on the light. She gets a lamp and she turns it on so that she can see. What's interesting is that there's many of us that have lost things, and maybe in a spiritual sense. Maybe you lost a friendship, or even lost a marriage. Lost a, our kids have kind of uh, are wayward, maybe sowing their wild oats. Maybe we've lost our health or lost an investment. When you lose something, what should we do? We should follow the example in Luke chapter 15. We need to turn on the light. When you've lost something spiritually, God's word, the light, Jesus is the light that you need in your circumstances. No matter what you've lost, no matter where you've been, Jesus is the solution. Turn with me to John chapter 1. Almost every week we've talked about John chapter 1. It's a great read. We read it a couple of weeks ago um, in, our normal Bible, in our Bible reading that we're tracking through. Um, 
or actually, I'm sorry, no, we haven't got to John yet. But listen to what it says. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Then it says in verse 6, it says, There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. Talking about John the Baptist. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. In himself was not the light. John the Baptist was not the light. He's not God. He, he, wasn't, he was the forerunner. He came only as a witness to the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. So John was the one that was saying, hey, the light is coming, and that light is Jesus. Jesus is the Word, and we need to get Jesus inside of us. The truth is, the light, God's Word, restores that which has been lost or stolen. And I'm telling you, Satan, he has wreaked havoc with many of our lives, and we know that. We can kind of track. We could stand up and tell stories of how we've been attacked or different things. But we know that the light of God's word, Jesus, will restore, will redeem that which has been lost. Let me ask you the question. Have you ever lost ground spiritually? Yeah, you're saved, but you just feel like you've been slipping. The answer is to get in the word of God. Have you ever felt weak or tired? Get into God's Word. Do you ever wonder where you should turn, which way to go? Maybe you've lost your way. Get into God's Word, and it will direct our paths. Amen? Yeah. I want to show you one more thing. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 27. Psalm 27, verse 1. Turn with me there. It says, The Lord is my light. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I want you to know, church, that Jesus is the true light. The light is our salvation. We understand that Satan comes as an angel of light. He tries to deceive us and to trick us, but the light is our salvation. Jesus is our salvation, and because of that, we do not have to fear for our lives. There's no fear for eternity. We can know for sure where we will go if we surrender our hearts to him. There's no fear, even on this side of eternity, of where God wants us for our future if we're in God's word. If Jesus is inside of us, he will direct our paths. There's no fear when it comes to our finances, or there's no fear when it comes to sharing our faith. There's no fear of direction. There's perfect peace that comes when we're in God's word. And so I'd ask you this morning, are you worried about your future? Are you worried about your finances? Are you worried to share your faith? Are you worried? Is there turmoil in your lives? Turn to God's word and it will bring light. It will bring life. The word is a lamp, a light that burns continuously. It will not go out. It's dependable. It's reliable. It's bright. It's powerful. And the truth of that makes Satan do everything he can to hide that word, doesn't it? He would love to cover that up. In Mark chapter 4, verses 21 through 23, in, the, in our reading from this past week, we see how Satan would love to do just that. On page 326 in our reading, it says, Jesus said to them, he says, do you bring a lamp? Talking, we can refer to God's, God's word. Do we bring a lamp to put it underneath a bowl? Do we cover it up underneath a bed? No, instead, don't you put it on a stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears, let him hear. I read that because the truth is, is that Satan would love to cover up the light. 
He would love to put it underneath a shield so it can't be seen. But we are called to let our light shine but from the inside out. It's God's word inside of us. Matthew 5, 14 says that we, God's people, are a city on a hill, cannot be hidden. We cannot be hidden. I love what Acts chapter 13, verse 47, it talks about Jesus, his word inside of us, God's word inside of us. It says this in Acts 13, verse 47, it says, I have made you a light so that you can bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Isn't that awesome? That's what God's plan is. It's for the light inside of us to make a difference. I think of all the missionaries that we support and all the flags that are representing different missionaries in different countries that we're sending people to every single month. And those, those missionaries are a light in a dark world. They are, they are piercing into the darkness. And it takes our help, and I appreciate all your support in that way. Church, the bottom line is that we need the Word. We need the light. Psalm 119, 105 says that the Word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Very clear scripture. This morning, if you need direction for any area of your life, which way to go, we find that direction in God's word direction the next thing is it helps us to combat sin psalm 119 early on if you read through psalm 119 in in its entirety you'll see this but at the very beginning verses 9 through 11 says this how can a young man keep his ways pure by living according to your word i seek you with all my heart do not let you me astray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against you. God's word will help us in our battle against sin, no matter what kind of sin you may be facing, no matter what kind of strongholds, no matter what kind of struggle. God's word is bigger than all of that sin. A couple more places I want you to turn, and I know we've been flipping through a lot of scriptures here. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. It's Jesus. It's actually a parallel passage to what we read in Mark, but I want to read it, uh, this section. It says, No one lights a lamp and puts it in a place where it is hidden. Or under a bowl. That's what Satan would love, is to take your light and to cover it up. Instead, he puts it on a stand so that those who come in may see the light. Your eye is a lamp to your body. I want you to understand this. What you allow into your, through your eyes, is what kind of shines on the inside. Your eye is a lamp of your body. When your eyes are good, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are bad, your body also is full of darkness. Verse 35, see to it then that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light, which God desires, and no part of it is dark, it will be completely lighted as when the light of a lamp shines in you. That's the goal. That's the goal, that God's word would get inside of us and we would shine so brightly. And we understand that when there's light on the inside, there's no fear, no fear of salvation. We can redeem what, that which was lost. It helps us with sin. It helps us with direction, all these things. And there's one other verse I want you to, to turn with me to. And uh, Brendan, I'm going to ask that you'd come at this time. We want to kind of set, set the stage for God to just uh, seal kind of his word in our lives here in the next few moments. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. This is the result of God's word inside of us. Listen to what it says. It says, this is the message we have heard from him 
and declare to you, God is light. Say that with me. God is light. In Him, there is no darkness at all. Aren't you thankful for that? That there's not wishy-washy, it's not sometimes on, sometimes off. He's always on. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, if you walk in the light, if you get God's Word inside of you and take God's Word at its Word and you live according to His precepts, to His Word, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Pretty powerful. Kind of what Eva was talking about earlier. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. When I read that this week, it brought me back to our mission statement. That we are here to connect with God, with each other, with the world. Read what it says. That we will have fellowship with the blood of Jesus. That's connecting with God. Our connection with God as we're in God's Word will be strong. It also says early on that we'll have fellowship with one another, which we're striving to do, to be connected not only with God, but with, with each other. And I love, again, what Acts 13, 47, that when we have the light inside of us, we will be able to reach to the ends of the earth. That's the connecting with the world. The key to our mission is God's Word inside of us. And we've got to do it. We've got to get it inside. And this morning, I want to take some time to reflect, saying, God, what are you saying in the congregation? What are you saying this morning to each and every person? And I believe that the Holy Spirit is prompting some things in our heart. He's speaking this morning. And let me just say this. I know God's heart because I've read his word. And his heart is for you to get in the word. To get in the word. And besides that, I believe God is speaking in maybe four different ways. The first is in regards to salvation. If you are here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus... This morning, we want to give you that opportunity. It's a free gift. God wants to restore your life. If you've been living in the world, if you've been living in darkness, living on your own, and you're saying, man, I need a help me. I need someone to help me get through this world. I can't do it on my own anymore. This morning, God, he would love to fill you, to save you. And this morning, we'll come back to that in just a moment. But if you're here, don't walk out of these doors without getting your heart and your, right, your life right with Christ. The second thing is direction. As I was praying this week and putting some details into the message, I really felt strong that there are people here praying and believing God for their next steps. They've been asking God, God, where do I turn? Which way do I go? What's your will for my life? And I just want you to know that when we get in God's word, it casts away all fear, all fear for the future. And this morning, I want you to know that God's word is available and he wants to speak to you through his word in regards to your future. I do not believe that as believers that we should have ambiguity in regard to what direction we should be going. And so this morning, if you feel like you're lost or kind of off track or where to turn today, God wants to secure that as you get into his word. And we're going to talk about how to do that in just a moment. Also for believers, there's darkness all around. We understand that there's sin everywhere. But we believe that God's word is light and that light will overcome the darkness. And the third thing is that if you are here this morning and there's sin that is trapping you, that is causing you grief, 
that is causing you trouble. Maybe you've dealt with it in the past, but it's creeped back in. This morning, God's word will help you overcome no matter what is happening in your life. Light will dissipate the darkness. And God wants you to do that. And then the last thing, again, as I was praying and just believing God for what he had for us this morning, the word of God for you this morning is that what has been lost will be redeemed, will be found in God's word. Don't turn away from law, from God's word. If you've lost traction, if you've lost a relationship, if you've lost income, lost your kids to the world, don't give up. If you've lost your health this morning, God's word will bring light into that circumstances. We serve a redeeming God. Do you believe that? And God wants to redeem you this morning. And so salvation, direction, dealing with sin, and redeeming what's lost, I believe. And there may be other things that God may be speaking to you this morning. But we wanted to provide an opportunity for you this morning to respond to what God is speaking in your heart. And so what we're going to do is in the next couple moments here, Brendan's going to lead us in a song, and we're going to respond to what God's doing in our lives. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is to grab your copy of God's Word. And if you don't have one with you, um, you can grab one from the back tables. But I'm going to ask that everyone has a, a copy of God's Word. We're just going to spend a few moments in worship and in prayer, asking God for His Word to be revealed to us. And what I'm going to ask uh, uh, Jessica on the back is that we would just put up those verses kind of just sporadically that we've kind of been looking at, and those are good places to start. There may be other scriptures that have kind of come to mind this morning as we've been in God's presence. You can search those scriptures out as well. But let God's word bring light into your life. You can come forward if you want. You can stay where you are. But we're going to spend a few moments in God's Word. We can probably put on the center section of light and help us read a little bit better. But this morning, this is a place of prayer, a place of to read God's Word for the next few moments and let God's Word, perfect, let God's Word bring light into our circumstances. Everyone got it? All right. Praise the Lord. Let me pray, and then we're going to re release you to do that. And if you need to get up and grab a copy of God's Word, do that. And then Brennan, however the Lord leads you, and then we'll have a, an official closing here in just a couple, in a few moments. Lord, we thank you this morning for the power of your Word. Your Word is daily bread. It's water to our souls. It's a lamp to our feet. It is the sword of the Spirit. It is your breath, the breath of God. And Lord, I pray that your word this morning would bring life into our circumstances. Lord, if there's those that are away from you this morning, your word is salvation. Your light is what brings salvation. Lord, for those that are struggling with sin, God, I pray that the light would cast out all the darkness. It would overcome the darkness. For those that have, feel like they've lost traction or lost something in a spiritual sense, God, I pray that you, your word will be a redeeming word for us. And Lord, for those that are struggling with direction, God, make us our ways clear. We pray it all in Jesus' wonderful name. And all God's people said, amen. Let's take a few moments. Let's crack God's word open. Tune.
my heart to sing that grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above praise of mount i am fixed upon it mount of thy redeeming love here i raise my ebenezer hither by thy help i come and i hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of god he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood oh to grace how great a debtor daily i'm constrained to be let thy grace lord like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee prone to wander lord i feel it prone to leave the god i love take my heart lord take and seal it seal it for thy courts above Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Jesus, I 
surrender humbly at his feet I bow worldly pleasures all forsaken take me Jesus take me now and I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all all to Jesus I surrender make me Savior holy thine let me feel the whole Holy Spirit, truly know that Thou art mine, and I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender surrender all. You know, sometimes we can kind of overcomplicate things. We can kind of, you know, we get in situations where we feel like we maybe can't hear from God, or maybe we don't feel like we're qualified to hear from God, or that it's too confusing or whatever. But it's really not hard to hear from God. I've been encouraged over my life when I have big decisions in front of me that I first turn to a place where my heart is in God's presence. And I usually turn on some worship music and let God's word you know, just kind of uh, prepare my heart for, to receive from God. And as I worship, as I sing, or if I get away and you know, put, put some earbuds in and I'll, I'll go out into the woods or, or listen to God's word, it, it kind of prepares my heart to receive. The next thing I'll do is I'll, if I'm asking God for a specific direction, I'll look to his word to confirm what I'm believing in my circumstances. Before we came here to the Gateway Church, we, Jessica and I, we got alone with God and we sought God's word in regards to moving here to the lakeshore. And I want to encourage you that whatever you're facing, to get in his word. And then the last thing that's been really helpful, and I don't do it great all the time, but on big decisions, I've been encouraged to write out prayers. To write. And as I write, there's some clarity that comes. And what's interesting is that as I will journal, as I'll spend time writing, just, you know, just free writing prayers to God, and then I go back and I look, okay, is there a theme or is there some things that are highlights? On so many occasions, there are things that will be highlighted that God's word will confirm. And it's amazing how that works together. And I want to encourage you to, to maybe develop some of those disciplines. Because God wants to direct you just like he wants to direct me. And you don't have to be a pastor or a leader in the church to be directed by God. God loves you so much. He wants to direct you personally in your life. And this morning was a small exercise of being in God's presence and let his word be rich in our souls. And this shouldn't be the only time this happens in the week. We've talked about that. It's our daily bread. It's our breath. We wouldn't think about going without breathing. And God's word is breath. It's his word to us. I'm going to pray a prayer of benediction. I want you to stand this morning. Father, we just give you our hearts. We give you our lives. 
we ask, Lord, that you would be directing us, that you would be helping us, no matter what we are facing. Lord, go before us, behind us, and all around us, and let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And Lord, let your word be hidden in our hearts so that we would not sin against you. And that your word would give direction, but it would also redeem that which has been lost. Lord, we thank you for your promises. And Lord, as we go today, Lord, I pray that our heads will be high, that we'll be confident in you and in your word. We pray it all in Jesus' name.